Good morning. Um, I'm trying to log in here. Oh, there we go. Uh, good morning. Um, I am live on uh, Periscope and live on Facebook Live. I'm going to try to see if I can find myself here on, on Periscope uh, so I can see any questions that pop up uh, here really quickly. I'm Just before I start my morning this morning, they're, re they're getting ready to room my first couple patients. And um, so I am uh, uh, trying to jump on here and, and dual screen broadcast. So Facebook Live and, and Periscope here. Good morning to all of you, and uh, my name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board-certified family physician, and I'm a board-certified obesity medicine specialist um, coming to you live from Surprise, Arizona. Uh, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about um, why be in ketosis. Uh, this is part number eight of a 25-part series. Uh, about uh, so Part number eight is testosterone. Um, hello uh, in Tennessee, and hello Jackie and all those that are signing on. Um, I'm going to try to give you a little bit, four or five minute uh, blip on how ketosis affects testosterone. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, when you're in ketosis, it allows for the rebalancing of testosterone and estrogen in women. Uh, one of the things that I see is at least a third of men uh, and maybe two thirds of women uh, will have a change in either their testosterone and or their estrogen when they're following a low fat, high carb diet. And the reason is that about 85% of the population has some degree of insulin resistance. That high insulin load leads to a suppression of testosterone uh, through a number of ways. Um, what we see is that the high insulin actually drives a, a hormone called calcitonin gene-related peptide, which is a, which is a newer uh, peptide we're learning about. But what it does is it's driven by inflammation, and it actually suppresses the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland in production of LH, or luteinizing hormone, and that lowers the testosterone in men uh, pretty significantly. I will see testosterone drop by almost 150 points uh, in what we call secondary hypogonadism, or low T, as you see advertised on late night TV all the time. Um, it's driven really by a high insulin load. Um, and the, it, the high testosterone in women is driven this, by the same factor. Their estrogen drops and their uh, testosterone goes up. And that's also caused by an inflammatory marker, we think. Um, we're, that's still on the cutting edge of medicine. But we know that when the in insulin is excessively high, and about 85% of the population has some degree of insulin resistance, meaning that they produce 2 to 10 times the normal insulin in response to their piece of bread or that bowl of cereal or that potato or even that oatmeal you ate this morning. Um, it drives that process, and so you, it suppresses testosterone in men, suppresses estrogen in women, and we see significant changes uh, in, in fatigue and things of that nature. When you're in ketosis, it actually, it actually reverses insulin resistance over a period of 18 to 24 months, and that's what I see clinically. Um, a percentage of patients with insulin resistance will also have leptin resistance. Now, leptin and adiponectin are two hormones produced by the fat cells, and those hormones um, actually um, make testosterone worse. A high, high, the higher the leptin goes within a leptin resistance, meaning your, your fat cells are producing excess leptin trying to tell your body to stop eating because you're full, but fructose and high triglycerides blockade the blood-brain barrier so that leptin can't cross and you never get the signal so it kicks out more and kicks out more. Um, well, that high leptin actually lowers your um, overall testosterone load as a man and it actually has a, 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 a sex-based effect. We see that that's more prominent in men than it is in women, which is pretty significant. Um, the other concern is that adiponectin is a hormone that actually helps uh, and is produced by the fat cells. Uh, the higher your adiponectin, uh, the, the, the lower the adiponectin goes, the more your sex hormone binding globulin goes up. Now, testosterone is bound to sex hormone binding globulin, um, and when it's bound, it can't be accessed by men. And so when your adiponectin, adiponectin goes down, you can't access testosterone. When your leptin goes up, you actually produce less testosterone. Uh, when you have more inflammation because of insulin, you actually produce less testosterone as a man. So uh, it's no wonder that you see low T as an advertisement all over late night, late night TV. Um, calorie restriction actually lowers testosterone by 50% over a period of seven days. So this low calorie, high carb, low fat diet we've been t preached to for 50 years is actually making men turn into women. And that's one of the challenges we're seeing. Um, the other issue is that um, uh, when you lower the, the, uh, the leptin level, you also see improvement in gro growth hormone. So muscle stability improves. When testosterone goes up, it actually allows you to preserve leucine, which allows the muscles to grow and stabilize. Um, and it also allows for an increased production of insulin-like growth factor, what we call IGF-1. That, that prevents Alzheimer's disease. We know that plays a role significantly in Alzheimer's disease. So being in ketosis and stabilizing your testosterone as a man or estrogen as a woman plays a huge role in your overall fatigue, your ability to lose, lose, or gain, lose weight, your ability to maintain weight, and your ability to feel like a man or feel like a woman. So that is your five-minute um, YB in ketosis uh, presentation, part number eight. Hopefully you like that.
And so basically the nuts and bolts of that is if you're in ketosis, you produce more testosterone. If you're in ketosis, you um, stabilize testosterone as a woman and you, you improve your estrogen production, which, which helps you out. And, and number three, it actually helps you stabilize muscle, helps mus muscle growth. And I think that's important and very, very powerful. It stabilizes DHEA and all the other hormones because those are all related to the production of testosterone and estrogen driven by FSH and LH from the hypothalamus in the brain. So these neurohormones that are producing excess insulin and leptin uh, because of our diet uh, are actually making us uh, produce less sex hormone. And that's a big problem that I see in my office every single day and I have for many years. Um, so that is your five-minute uh, ketosis talk. Again, my name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board-certified family physician and a board-certified obesity medicine specialist. I'm in Surprise, Arizona, and I, I hope you have a great morning. Um, I, I, uh, if you want to learn more about what we're talking about, go to my website at docmuscles.com, um, and you can learn about um, how, to, how to go into ketosis, what exogenous ketones do for you and help, help you maintain ketosis, what vitamin supplements will be beneficial for you in, in helping that process. And that's what I specialize in, that's what I do. So go to my website at darkmuscles.com, sign up for my um, six part uh, free uh, weight loss mini course, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Have a great day. Uh, take good care, guys. Bye bye.